thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to share with all of your audience um, some of the opportunities that Panama has to offer for foreign direct investment. And for those of you who've never been to Panama, well, welcome to Panama. As you can see, we are a cosmopolitan city, a center of trade in the center of the Americas, and, and truly the place to be for foreign direct investment, especially that who has as a target the markets of Latin America, the Caribbean, and uh, North America. And Pro Panama is the um, national authority for the promotion of export and investments. We were created by law uh, last year, and uh, we are in the midst of becoming uh, an independent authority of the government, created to promote all of the investment opportunities that Panama offers, as well as to um, internationalize our export offer, our products um, into uh, target markets all around the world. And just to put us into a context about Panama, we are a small country in size and population, but we are a big country in terms of logistics and infrastructure and access to market. And we have also been able to um, diversify our export offer and the markets to which it goes uh, so from Panama, you can access uh, literally the world through the 23 free trade agreements uh, that we have enacted. And we are one of the fastest growing countries in terms of GDP uh, post pandemic. And um, all of the international regulations say that we are supposed to be one of the countries in Latin America with a more expedited growth um, during this process. And one of the things that always comes up whenever we make a presentation about Panama, it's, well, why Panama? Uh, why Panama? Um, why is the offer of Panama so unique for international investors? And we think that aside from all of the characteristics that you can see in this slide, the most important one to us is the social peace and stability that Panama offers, which is a key ingredient for any business that wants to grow over time. And the fact that um, you can see other countries around us, unfortunately, in Latin America, are not being able to say the same for the time being. Panama has enjoyed social peace and stability for over 25 years now. And that gives the investors the possibility of growing their business from Panama. Aside from the geographic position, and the fact that we're virtually free of natural disasters away from uh, the faults that create earthquakes or um, uh, hurricanes in the Caribbean. We are also blessed by having very resourceful uh, people here in Panama that can adapt to any situation and that have been considered among the best trainable people in Latin America. And as I was talking about the economic growth, and you can see the signs of the GDP growth of Panama, uh, not set by us, but by international organizations, the World Bank, the Monetary Fund, uh, the Inter-American uh, Development Bank, the Central American Bank for Economic Integration, ECLAC, they have all agreed that Panama, because uh, of the way that it was handling um, the economic growth before the pandemic is positioned to be one of the countries with fastest economic growth after um, the pandemic or in the recovery process. And here you can see um, the projections for growth for 2022, and you can clearly see how Panama is above um, the medium for even Central America or all of the countries in, in Latin America, even economies that are bigger than uh, Panamanian economy. And one of the reasons um, for this uh, projections is um, undoubtedly the financial services sector um, that in Panama has over 60 years of being growing as one of the most important ones in the region. 67 banks from 22 countries around the world are operating in Panama in US dollars and other currencies. And Panama has been able to maintain the investment grade even throughout the pandemic and in the recovery process. So 
Of these 67 banks, probably the banks that you do business with or banks that your bank does business with are already operating in Panama and that facilitates uh, doing business here. And this is why many multinationals, over 170 actually, have called Panama their headquarters for their regional operations because of all of the attractive um, infrastructure and policies and laws that Panama has to offer. And as the ambassador was saying, we take sustainability um, to heart. It is the, the cornerstone or, of our investment promotion strategy where we're aiming to become the hub for sustainable investments for Latin America and the Caribbean. And we are already one of the three countries in the world who's carbon negative and one of the two countries in the world who has already complied with the 30 by 30 strategy of the United Nations. So we are looking for B type companies that are sustainable, not only in their processes and in their products and services, but also in the way that they do business. And we, we want to bring them all across the board in any uh, business activity that they develop in Panama. And we're truly one of the best connected countries in the world, certainly the best connected country in Latin America and the Caribbean, since we um, are connected not only by sea and by air, but also by fiber optic cables that literally go through Panama and create a better connectivity than uh, any other country in Latin America for purposes of uh, sharing information. So because we are aware that we are a small country in size and population, we set out to get the world as a market for any good or service manufactured or produced in Panama. And so we have negotiated 23 free trade agreements that give access to almost 60 countries around the world and over 1.5 billion consumers in those countries that can access the goods and services manufactured in Panama so that they will have the same prerogatives that we have negotiated um, for our own uh, products and get into those markets with special treatment. And then of course, logistics is uh, the first of the three hubs that we promote in our investment strategy because of the geographical position and the amazing infrastructure that has been created around our geographical position, we can offer a logistics service center that has no rival in Latin America or the Caribbean. Not only the canal and the access it has to maritime routes and ports all around the world, but also the port system, because we have five of the top 10 ports of uh, the Americas here in Panama. In fact, the most important port in the Atlantic and the most important port in the Pacific of Latin America are located in Panama, which gives access to many other ports all around the world. But aside from that, we are also a hub for the movement of passengers and cargo by air through the hub of the Americas operating at the Tukumic International Airport. And um, this has been recovering very well uh, post pandemic. And um, I was uh, talking to uh, the COPA officials about how many flights have they recovered and over 70% of what they had in 2019 is already um, operational. So we know that we are growing um, and recovering uh, better faster because of the because of the infrastructure that we have to offer uh, here in Panama. And many, many others have taken note and Panama has been voted uh, by international organizations um, in different criteria. And um, it's essential to travel because the Tucumán Airport is number seven for international flights in 2021. Um, so we can see the growth that the, that the airport has and the importance as a connectivity center. But then we also have several laws that promote Panama as a regional headquarters for multinational companies. 
And we have a law that has about 170 companies already operating in Panama. And a spin-off of that law is the manufacturing law, EMA, which promotes companies to manufacture, multinational companies to manufacture in Panama with specific um, tax, labor, and immigration incentives for their operations in Panama. And I'm sure Henry is going to comment more on uh, all of these uh, laws. So uh, I won't go into detail, but if you want any further information on any of this, um, you can contact Pro Panama and let us know. Um, so then uh, the, the strategic destination of Panama puts us in line with uh, near shoring activities. And we are promoting Panama to be a center for near shoring activities in the continent. Now that the global value chains are becoming more regional and uh, companies are looking for places to manufacture closer to their markets, we think that the logistics of Panama allows us to be this, the place to be for near shoring activities. Now, the second hub that we promote is the hub of um, connectivity. And so digital operations from Panama. And for that, we offer the fiber optic cables that actually go through our country, the latest one, the Curie cable from Google, uh, which is responsible where all of these cables are responsible for 100% of the regional internet traffic 97% of the international voice traffic and 90% of data transmissions that go through Panama, a country virtually free of natural disasters with a special law uh, regarding personal data protection for the information that comes out of our country. And this is why many companies have established themselves in Panama for where data warehousing operations um, in other operations regarding the use of the intensive use of technology. And we're pursuing digital nomads in this new tendency from the, the recovery process uh, post pandemic. So we just enacted a law to bring digital nomads to Panama who can work and live here for between nine and 18 months with a minimum income of $3,000 and they can do the whole process through the internet, it takes about a month. Um, so they can do it digitally and you can find more information in the live QR code in this slide. And the third hub is the food hub. And we think that Panama because of land, um, sunshine and water, which uh, we have in abundance and we've been blessed by that, uh, can be a place to promote smart agriculture. So we're looking to integrate technology into the production of food so that we can feed not only Panamanians, but also other countries in the world who have not been so lucky as to have all of these characteristics to produce the food that they uh, need for their uh, people to thrive. And we think that Panama is uniquely positioned for this. So we have enacted a law to promote agroparts and develop 20,000 hectares of agroparks in Panama, where you can do the entire value chain for manufacturing of products uh, from the raw materials uh, to the finished product with added value already ready to go to market. And so for this, we also offer specific incentives for companies who would like to either start an agropark or be part of existing agroparks in Panama. And now there are two sectors that are very important to us. Uh, one of them is energy. And we are already positioned as home of the largest wind farm in the region. But we have enacted also um, an energy strategy that uh, will lead to a transformation of the sector and making the matrix go more into renewable green energy. And for this reason, um, this energy uh, transition strategy has been praised by the UN as one of the most interesting and important um, energy transition strategies in the region. And it not only touches the production of green energy or the distribution of energy, but it also it touches energy in the way it affects our everyday lives from 
uh, transportation, to waste management, to water management, all of the areas that um, uh, regard energy as a component. And the last sector is the tourism sector, one of the oldest economic drivers of our country. This sector is positioned to grow exponentially post-pandemic because of the new tourism strategy uh, that calls for tourism, tourism conservation and research and places Panama at the epicenter of um, research based on uh, the natural resources that we have. And so here we have a law that promotes um, incentives to um, facilitate the capitalization of projects. And we're looking to enhance um, convention uh, tourism through the new convention center, one of the largest in Latin America, the largest in Central America. And uh, that combined with uh, the, the transportation by air that makes it very easy for companies to connect to Panama, makes it a place uh, to be for conventions in, in the region. Also sports tourism, theme parks and, and, and lodging uh, projects in, in our country and gastronomy as a way to promote our culture and also exports of uh, Panamanian products. And now uh, Panama has been deemed one of the 22 places to visit in 2022 and also the best place to retire um, according to uh, international living. So as you can see, international organizations already look at Panama uh, in the context of its tourism development. And um, I would like to finish sharing with you um, a note on the permanent residence for qualified investors, a new law that was just enacted um, last year, and that is aiming to bring to Panama qualified investors with a minimum investment of $300,000 um, that you can do whether it is in a, in a uh, property that you invest in Panama, opening a bank account or through the market, you can get this, um, this residency through the internet and it also takes about 30 days to qualify. And this going into the regimes, we have several regimes that promote um, residency for qualified investors. And if you would like more information on the requirements um, uh, to apply for these regimes, uh, please contact us at uh, ProPanama. And I would like to leave you with uh, our webpage, which has a tool called the Panama Explorer. And when you go into our webpage and you go into this tool, you can see the whole offer for export and investments by province in Panama. You can see the sectors, you can see the companies, um, you can have information, contact information directly with companies, uh, and you can see the different kinds of projects that you can do in each province. So this is a, a very powerful and important tool that will let you explore Panama and see the investment opportunities that we have. And finally, because we live in the era of COVID, um, I want to put your minds at ease about how Panama has been handling uh, COVID and uh, share with you that uh, due to the immunization strategy, 80% of the population has at least one dose as of January uh, 16 of this year. I myself and many of the government officials already have the three doses. Um, so we started a program to vaccinate tourists in October of last year, also to help our friends that come to Panama to be vaccinated. And um, if you would like to hear some testimonials from CEOs that have already believed in Panama, a complete video of such testimonials is available in our webpage as well. So thank you so much for your attention. I hope this information has been useful to you. And for any further questions, inquiries that you might have, please feel free to contact us at ProPanama. Thank you.